This is the Sony ZV-1 Mark II, the absolute best camera for people who want to shoot video, YouTube, TikTok, whatever. This is the iPhone 14 Pro, and I want to put it up against Tony's camera to see if you really need to upgrade or if this is just good enough to get your video work done. An iPhone. <laughs> okay, that's going to be great. The camera you pick is important, but even if you're using a smartphone, you need some good support for it. You need some good lighting that's going to make a huge difference, and you should be using an external mic. There's one place to go for all of that. The store for creators is Adorama. Use this link right here and visit Adorama. They are creators just like us. They have everything you need from lighting to support to drones to get those beautiful aerial shots and of course real cameras for real creators like this Sony ZV-E1 Mark II. They also have phones. They have everything for everyone and they have good deals. I always go to the deal of the day and check out what's on sale and it's really exciting to see the deals that you can get there. Yeah so use our links and that helps support Adorama and that helps to support us. Thanks for sponsoring us Adorama. The ZV-1 Mark II, it has an 18 to 50 lens on it with 20 megapixels and a one inch sensor, but it also has clear view zoom. So I can zoom in even further down to about 70 millimeters with 4K video or 100 millimeters with HD video because it's oversampling 4K. You can't do that, Chelsea. I, I have a little power have, zoom I, here. I, I have 4K 60. Yeah, the iPhone has 4K 60. And if you want 60 frames per second on the Sony, you have to drop to HD. Phones always give you all the specs, but what creators need is good glass. Here's the Sony power zoom, starting at super wide angle and zooming in optically, and then you'll see a little pause. And then it switches to digital zoom and goes in even further. In video mode, the iPhone only zooms digitally, so the quality becomes garbage and it can't zoom very far because it can't switch lenses. If you switch to photo mode but record video, the aspect ratio is wrong, but it will switch between the lenses. But as you zoom, you see weird jerks and changes in sharpness. Smooth zooms are a big win for the Sony. The iPhone's three prime lenses are okay at their native focal lengths, but anytime you zoom between those focal lengths, the quality is garbage. Your phone has like four cameras, but when you're filming yourself, you have to choose the one front facing camera that is a 24 millimeter camera and it's not wide angle enough to really film yourself it's ridiculous well actually i'm doing fine right now no look i'll do i'll record you're in the frame i'm in the frame okay your head is barely in there but look well, what i can do i mean i'm I, short I can shoot at that focal length, or I can shoot super wide angle and include much more of the background. He's going on about his wide angle zoom, but his sky is completely blown out. The iPhone's HDR video just looks better. Wait, I need a rematch because the iPhone is automatically in HDR mode, but the Sony does HDR, but I didn't think to turn it on. So this is the iPhone footage. This is the Sony with standard video, the auto exposure with no exposure compensation. You can see the sky gets pretty blown out. And now this is the Sony with HLG3 and HDR mode, which should allow me to capture more dynamic range. Freeze frame and zoom in. You can see the iPhone selfie camera makes my skin look like garbage because it way over sharpens it. The Sony is much more natural. I am down to a 16 millimeter equivalent. And I just have more flexibility. And of course I can zoom in if I want to, but I don't have to, I have the option. And you, there's no way you can Mitch, go wider angle with that. Please, you have the longest arms. Give that to me and we'll see which one actually. Oops. <laughs> oh, your hand is right in front of the lens because there's no place to hold an iPhone when you're trying to create. Yeah, see so much, you can see the whole house in the background there. Okay, yours is a bit wider, but I can barely see your screen. Well, look at your skin tones there. You look like an Oompa Loompa on yours, whereas this has nice natural skin tones because it's a real camera for real creators. Why'd you call me an Oompa Loompa? Look at these screens. Mine's nice and bright and Oompa Loompy, and look at <laughs> yours. Okay, my screen is, my screen is pretty bad. <laughs> Actually, it's really bad. Why is it so bad? But you know what really counts is audio quality. There's nothing more important than sound. And I have this furry, what some people call a dead cat. I don't agree with that. I term. think it's offensive. And it's kind of breezy here. So I guess now we'll be able to listen for the uh, audio and see who sounds better. Okay, neither sounds great, but the big directional mics and the dead cat on the Sony do sound better. But the Rode Wireless Go 2 mics that we're using for the rest of the video sound way better than either. So head to this link. And if you're using an iPhone, also get the Rode SC15 adapter from Adorama. 
All right, I was thinking about it and I don't think that you can shoot macro with video. So let's try to get video of these little pretty flowers and see who's more successful. All of the greatest filmmakers have said, you, you're not shooting video unless you can shoot macro. Holy moly. Do you see mine? Do you see how more macro we mine is? Well, yeah, but you're zoomed in. Okay, so zoom in. I don't feel like people need to include pollen in their vlogs. This is this is fine. Look, what am I going to go right up inside my nose? Let's review. This gets close enough. <laughs> Let's review the footage and see whose is better. I can't so much see my screen right now. Can you turn up your screen brightness? It's up. It's up. I also can't scrub through the video. I mean, yours looks, yours looks better now, but when we play it back, when you edit it and share it, mine's going to look better. Um wrong. The ZV-1 couldn't match the iPhone's magnification and it struggled with autofocus. Whenever I need a quick close-up, I grab my iPhone and I switch to the 0.5 times lens. It's amazing. Imagine if I had to shoot th like this is photography. You hold it with your little fingertips and you hold it out like this. Look, first of all, I can do one-handed shooting. I have a real grip. I have a real shutter button. I can just go and I can take a picture. And in fact, I can zoom and I can do all of this with one hand. And sometimes you have to do that. Like if you're a crazy vlogger like me, you got your electric skateboard remote control in one hand and you're taking pictures with the other. You cannot do that with a phone. Also, it's not stable. Your video is going to be all shaky. Like there's a reason photographers have a, a form factor that looks like this because footage is stable because you can control it. Something else. My tilting screen allows me to get lots of different angles so I can shoot down low like this. I can have the screen at a right angle to the camera and right. You would have to get on the ground, right? Cause your yeah. screen, your screen is fixed to your lens. Listen, that's actually my biggest complaint. I will concede that you have the correct form factor ergonomics and screen. Thank you. Other than the screen brightness. I guess we're done here. I win. As a hip active vlog person, I'm often so on the go that I can't stop to film something. I gotta film it while I'm walking. And that's why Sony includes active stabilization here. So I can hand hold this, no handle or anything, and it's gimbal like smooth. What do you got, Chels? I can also hold things in my hands like this. Okay, I'm getting nauseous just watching you. I'm having a fine time. I can see your screen and it seems pretty shaky. Um, this seems like a big win for the Sony, for anybody who actually wants to walk around and you don't want to make your viewers sick. In selfie mode, I can't use the action mode in my video, but I can with my rear camera. So let's test that. Do you have action mode on? Yeah. I okay. Think. It's probably all shaky, right? No, it's so smooth. Action mode is okay in sunlight. It's using the super wide angle lens and then cropping way down. So it's not going to be super sharp. It also needs to be at like one one thousandth of a second because it's stabilizing stuff in post. So it doesn't work in low light, but yeah, it can be good in some circumstances. Well then let's try your camera and see. Okay. This is Sony's active stabilization mode and it works the same way, basically like cropping in and then moving the image around because the ZV-1 Mark II doesn't have sensor stabilization or lens stabilization. That's to keep the cost down. And frankly, I think the stabilization is good enough. Good enough for you maybe, Tony, but my iPhone's footage is much smoother. My iPhone also did a better job balancing the mixed exposure and it looks just as sharp to my eyes. While the ZV-1 II was better in selfie mode, the iPhone is better with the rear camera. Uh, I'll call this a draw. All right, I'm filming Tony in cinematic mode. It blurs the background and it adds some different tones to it. Um, it looks pretty good. The background blur looks fake. I can see it's not working around his head, but it is, it's interesting. Tony, you have a cinematic mode in your camera as well. Yeah, and you know what? It has a real bokeh, not foca. I'm gonna turn on cinematic mode if I can find it. Do, do you remember where in the menu yeah. cinematic mode is? Well, they have a lot of options, but you have to remember where they are. So you go into tone and color. Hold on, you have to make sure that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so you had to go into, it's the very end, shooting option. Okay, option 12, and then it's cinematic three. vlog set. And then you turn it on. Okay. You're gonna be better because you have long hair and long that hair. is going to completely, oh, it does a countdown for me. That's gonna completely screw up your foca. Oh my God, it looks so cinematic right now. Thank you, I've been trying. 
How's it look? Yeah, hold there. I'm just gonna. How are the colors? Oh, the colors are gorgeous. Now pose for me. No, this is a competition. I don't look good for my competitors. <laughs> you need to be cinematic. <laughs> okay, give me, give me your phone and I'll do the same thing with yours. Okay. I'll do the same. It's the same. It's the same. I'm being the same. How's it look? Terrible. I mean, it's fake bokeh. It's making the edges of your hair look all much. Yeah, I don't like fake bokeh. So I guess that yours wins by default because of the bokeh, which I don't like. The iPhone cinematic mode bokeh isn't perfect, but it's not that bad. And if it's too much, you can dial it back and post. At least the iPhone has the option to add bokeh. The ZV-1 doesn't blur the background very much at all. So, sorry, Tony. One thing that I am jealous of is that the entire time we've been filming, I've been blowing up with notifications and I find it extremely distracting mm -hmm. because I just want to take video and enjoy the moment and I have questions coming from people and... Yeah, I mean, the phone is a multi-tool, right? It yeah. does everything. It's your flashlight too, but you don't know like a real carpenter or a real mechanic who uses a multi-tool for everything. They have specialized tools and that's what this is. This is a specialized tool for creators who are serious about what they do. Well, I give you that point, so maybe be a little more appreciative. Let's talk about workflow because I know I can take any of the videos or pictures that I took today and just share them immediately or edit a video and upload it directly or do a live even. So what's your process like? I have the Sony Creator app well, bust and it, it will out. copy files from my uh, camera to my phone. Sometimes I found that the apps can be good and I'll use them or they can be kind of fussy and temperamental and it can be frustrating to use so yeah actually should we grab a seat I don't know this could let's take see. a while I have a I have a couple minutes let's see what you got okay I'm doing it start connecting oh it popped right up I didn't have to do anything it's connecting it just says select an accessory and there's no accessory I gotta say there's not a lot of confidence in your voice it said it may take a few seconds oh there it goes pair next this is going really well it's actually going pretty well and you only had to pair it one time okay now i just gotta transfer my files over switched from bluetooth to wi-fi so i can get that high speed transfer and let's get some of these video files transferred over it's it's going great actually copy to my phone image size for importing two megapixels videos are cut to 15 seconds no Okay, we're not gonna do that. We definitely want full size images. By default, it cuts your videos to 15 seconds. Okay, but you can change it. There we go. Transferring files one of five. Could not perform. Okay, that was, that was user error, okay? We found a piece of the house. <laughs> While we wait, you know, what you could do is um, to make Frank's job a little bit easier, you could stand on maybe the third or fourth step there so we're at eye level with each other. Yeah, maybe I could also get a part-time job and make some money while you load your pictures. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm already at one of five. <laughs> it's about one fifth of the way through one of five videos. Tony, I just texted eight videos in a picture to all of our friends and family, and I got a part time job and I made enough money <laughs> to make up for all this time you're wasting. The wireless transfer is not practical, but what is practical is you take the memory card out of the camera and you put it into an Apple SD card reader, which you can get at Adorama, along with so many other accessories that creators need. Now, I wish the wireless transfer worked because it does, it's very fast on the iPhone. It's probably fine it for pictures. It, well, it compresses it down to two megapixels so it can be a little quicker. Mm -hmm. That's why I recommend getting the Apple SD card reader. But Adorama has that and tripods and lights and everything else that creators need in addition to this camera. And when you transfer it, with the SD card, it happens very quickly and easily, so you don't actually have to go through this. If you want to check out any of these items or get great deals, and they even give you free stuff when you yeah, order things. that's why I shop there. You can go to Adorama and check out the links down below. Thanks so much, Adorama, for sponsoring this video. All the links are in the description, and I'm now on two of five. One of my videos has already been transferred over. Where? To my, to my phone. That did not go great for me, but... There's okay. one test I will definitely win, and that's low light performance. Because I have a one inch sensor, I have an F1.8 lens, and you have a tiny little smartphone lens. So let's go to the basement at home and see what real low light performance is like. That sounds threatening. Maybe only one of us will leave. <laughs>
So for our low light test, I'm at ISO 12,800. I'm at F1.8 and oh, I mean, look at yours. You can't even, all you can see is the candles. Can you expose for the faces? Oh, she's trying to drag up the exposure and it's not working. Well, it's not that dark here. This is like what a restaurant or a bar or a club would yeah, be. This is, but um, this is also my selfie camera. So I would probably turn it around and oh, wow, that's much better. Well, yeah, but what if you're filming yourself? I don't do that. I'm not narcissistic. <laughs> you're on camera like four hours a week. And I don't enjoy one minute of it. And I could just go like this and I, I turned it like this. I know where I am. What I do when I have to do that is I'll use the camera app on my watch. And then you can kind of compose the shot while using the rear screen. But that is the benefit of the flip screen is I can flip around and I can use the fast good lens for everything. You get a totally different experience when you're using the front or the back camera. That's true. And you have to think, oh, I'm in low light, so I can't use the telephoto lens. I can't use the super wide. I have to use only the main back camera. This, any angle, any time, you get consistent results because that's what creators need for tools. And that's what the strength of this camera is. So full disclosure, this is the camera I use when we're traveling and I'm vlogging because my phone is not enough to get shots like that in low light. And it also obviously has many more benefits that we've outlined in this video. So that's definitely an application where it's better. But I think even for me, it doesn't replace my iPhone. I still use the iPhone all the time. And I, but I am aware of the strengths and the weaknesses. And that's why I have different tools for different things. One of the weaknesses of this camera is vertical video. While it will shoot vertical video, it, they only put tripod mounts on the bottom of it. So there's no mounts here and there's no good way to connect it. So what you can do is you can go to Adorama and you can get the small rig cage for it. And that includes some vertical mounts and that can make things much better. But still, even now the user interface doesn't rotate to vertical. It's clear Sony hasn't really thought through the entire process of recording vid vertical video for TikTok or Instagram. So I still often use the phone for that. But overall, I think it's a better option than the phone. In summary, both the iPhone and the ZV-1 Mark II have different strengths and we use them both in our productions. The iPhone's action mode is better at stabilizing moving footage, but it only works with the rear camera. If you have to use the front camera, the ZV-1 is better, well, all the time. It has better skin tones, better optical zoom, better sharpness, better stabilization. The iPhone does work better for vertical video and the screen is easier to see in sunlight. And the iPhone, of course, is easier for sharing and live streaming. The ZV-1 is better for one-handed filming and the ZV-1's tilt screen makes interesting angles easier. The ZV-1's optical zoom offers smooth zooms and better sharpness between the iPhone's native focal lengths. And the ZV-1's on-camera mic makes better sound, though they both need an external microphone for the best results. Finally, the ZV-1 is a big win in any kind of low light situation. If you wanna buy this, use our link here and that'll take you to Adorama. They're sponsoring this video, but that's where we shop because Adorama is a store made for creators by creators. When you buy something, you can often get some free stuff, memory card, filters. The deal of the day. And you can also sign up to be a part of a points program where you can earn points and get money off. I'm a VIP member and yeah. that saves me money. Every time I buy something, I get money back. And I use that to buy more gear. <laughs> And yeah. as a result, I like to buy a lot of gear. Yeah, we've got a lot of gear. So check out Adorama at this link here and be sure to use our link because that lets them know that you heard about it from us and that keeps these unbiased reviews coming for you. Thanks Adorama and also thank Sony for making a great camera. Yep, and don't forget to subscribe because we have tutorials and reviews coming up soon. Bye.